compared to Venn diagram. I want people who are taking math, people who are taking science. So in my Venn diagram, if they overlap, where they overlap, these are the people that take both, math and science. If they don't overlap, what does that mean? Means what, Angelique? They're not taking both. They're either taking math or they're taking science. There's no commonality here. There's no nothing where they overlap. They are mutually exclusive. No overlap. An event diagram can have that. I wouldn't put it in a Venn diagram, but a Venn diagram can have that, where they're not overlapping. So just be aware that we're going to get that. All right. So a mutually exclusive says that event A and event B cannot happen at the same time. And we can, we can get that. Um, for instance, you roll a die. You roll a three on a die. You roll a four on a die. Can I roll one die and get a three and a four? No. So they have to be mutually exclusive. Some things like automatically have to be mutually exclusive. Some you're going to have to think about a little bit. Okay. How about selecting a male student and randomly selecting a nursing major? There's not mutually exclusive. Can they happen at the same time? Can I select one person who is a male and a nursing student? Right? It's either going to be a female or a male, right? So those are not mutually exclusive. These are mutually exclusive, can't happen at the same time. And these are not mutually exclusive. If you can ask yourself, can I find a male nursing major, then this is one person, then they are not mutually exclusive. They can happen at the same time. The mutually exclusive, go, don't go by the mutual part, go by the exclusive part. Because the, the name in itself is kind of misleading. Mutual means you usually have like a, a common thing between you, an agreement or something, you, you feel like they're mutual. But exclusive means excluded away from each other. So kind of go by the excluded part. So think about these first. Oh, well, let's do this one. Randomly selecting a blood donor with type O and randomly selecting a female blood type, a blood donor. So ask yourself this. Can I select one person who is a female with the blood type O? So are these mutually exclusive or not? Not. They're not mutually exclusive. They don't exclude each other. They include each other. Okay? Think of this. Randomly select a jack from a standard deck of cards. Randomly select a face card from a standard deck of cards. Are they mutually exclusive? Can they happen at the same time? See, I want you to just think about those for a second. Come up with a situation. Come up with a situation. I randomly select a jack, and I randomly select a face card. A jack is a face card, yes. But are they the same thing? I need to get the jack, right? Randomly select a vehicle that is a Ford. Randomly select a vehicle that is a Toyota. Can I select something that is a Ford and a Toyota? Mm -mm. Unless they're doing something tricky out there. Who knows? Sometimes they join forces, right? Now, our rules for adding are tougher. Our rules for adding say the probability that A or B will occur, and, and, and that is an or statement, is given by when they are not mutually exclusive, I have to subtract what they have in common. If 
they are mutually exclusive, all I have to do is add them together. And we'll, we'll look about these when, when you look them in a, um, in a problem. I should have put paper on. Did everybody find the paper? Um, if they are mutually exclusive, all we have to do is add the ors. So let's take a look at this and see what makes sense here. You randomly select a card from a standard deck. Find the probability that it is a 4 or an 8. Now, can I pull a 4 and an 8 at the same time? No. So these are mutually exclusive. Agree? Mutually exclusive says they have nothing to do with each other. So I take the probability of a 4 and I add the probability of an 8. Agree? So what is the probability of getting a 4 out of your deck? Four fours out of how many? Fifty-two. Fifty-two cards. How many aces in your deck? Four aces. And why am I not changing the bottom number? I'm only drawing one card. I'm only drawing one card. I want to know what is the probability when I draw this card, I'm selecting a card. What is the probability that in my hand could be a four or an eight? It can't be a 4 and an 8 at the same time, right? But it can be a 4 or it can be an 8. Isn't that probability better than just saying what is the probability of getting a 4? Because now I'm adding 4 and 8. So I just add these together. Fraction, keep the same denominator, add the numerator. Good? Okay. On the opposite side of this, you roll a die. Only one time you roll a die. Find the probability of rolling a number less than three or an odd number. I only get one number when I roll. So I'm going to write my dice out right now. How many of those are less than three? Two. How many of those are odd numbers? Three. Did one of these happen at the same time? Is, is there one number on my die that hits both situations? The one, right? So these are not mutually exclusive. They have an overlap. When they are not mutually exclusive, I have to subtract out where they overlap. So the probability of a number less than three is what? Number less than three, two out of six. What is the probability of an odd? Three out of six. And I notice the probability of a number less than three and odd, how many of those did I get? How many were less than three and odd? One. Only one situation happened where they overlap, right? So I say, okay, the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of my overlap, my and statement. So I get three six, oh sorry, two six, plus three six minus one two. I get five minus one, four six. This is what's different. 
they overlap. I would have counted it twice, but I can only count it once. So when they are not mutually exclusive, when they have something in common, when they overlap, and, and it sounds weird because you, you hear the mutual word first, you don't hear the exclusive word first. This is an overlap. It means it hits both situations. It means in my Venn diagram, my numbers less than three and my odd numbers share that number one. So therefore, what happens on a Venn diagram? You don't count it twice, right? You only count it once. So because I count it twice, I have to subtract how many of these overlap. This is the tough part. Okay? Here's another one. Find the probability of a red card or a... Now, say to yourself, can I find a red card that is an eight? Hmm. So I'm going to count that red card in the red. I'm going to count that eight in the eight. Eight when I count that my eight. So there's an overlap. I've got a Venn diagram situation. Think of your Venn diagram. Here's my red card. Here's my aces. Devin just told me I have an overlap. I have a red card that's an eight. In fact, how many red cards are aces? Two. I have two cards that overlap the situation. So therefore, how many red cards in my deck? 26 out of 52, exactly half, but use the denominator. How many aces in my deck? Kept all four. Mm -hmm. And how many of them were red aces? Two. Now, if you added the two over 52, but then you don't have to subtract out the two over 52. It works out the same. So 30 minus two, 28 out of 52. I'm only pulling one card, but my probability is far greater because I'm saying from that one card that you draw, I don't care if it's a red card or an ace. You get a little extra ump in here. Okay. So do you see what the mutually exclusive does? What if I say this? Find the probability that I draw a diamond or a heart. These are both red cards. Can I ever find one card that is a diamond and a heart together? So what is my Venn diagram? My Venn diagram says diamond, heart. Do they touch? They are mutually exclusive. How many diamonds in my deck? 13. How many hearts in my deck? So therefore, 26 out of 52. Isn't that half? Isn't that half my deck? The red, the both red? Doesn't that make sense? What's the probability of pulling a red card? It's either a diamond or a heart, right? Isn't that half of your deck? The other half are your black cards. Right? This is the hardest part, this mutually exclusive part. I need you to visualize your Venn diagram. Is it a possibility they can overlap? When they overlap, I have to subtract it out. Okay, I want you to take a minute and I want you to do both of these. So let's take a look at this. A die is rolled. I'm only doing this one time. One die. Find the probability of getting a six or an odd number. So first off, are these mutually exclusive? Right, are they mutually exclusive? Can they happen at the same time? No, so they're mutually exclusive. That's what's misleading about the term. They are mutually exclusive. They cannot happen at the same time. Don't look at the mutual part, look at the exclusive part. If I put this on a Venn diagram, my six would be here. Do my odd numbers intersect my six? Is six an odd number? It would be here. They're mutually exclusive of each other. They exclude each other. So do I have an overlap? So what is the probability of a six? Plus, what is the probability of an odd? 
therefore, four out of six. I've got my six, and then I have my odds. So nobody overlaps here. They are mutually exclusive. A card, a card, one card, is selected from the standard deck. Find the probability that it is a face card or a heart. Say to yourself, can I have a face card that is a heart? Can my face card be the jack of hearts? Mm -hmm. So am I mutually exclusive? No, it's kind of like the, the jack with the face card. Can I have a jack that is a face card? Then those are not mutually exclusive. The words are kind of tricky. So if I pictured my Venn diagram, here's my face card, here's my heart. These are my guys that are heart face card. That means when I add them together, I have something to subtract. Because I would have added them in the first part, I would have added them in the second part. So what is the probability that I am a face card? Each one has three, right? Each one has three face cards, each two, so three times four, plus out of 52, plus how many hearts in your deck? 13 out of 52. Now, how many of those hearts are face cards? Three. The jack of hearts, the queen of hearts, the king of hearts. So I have to subtract that out. Because I added it in here, and I, and I added to this side, and I added it to this side. So these were not mutually exclusive. So this gives me 25 minus 3, 22, over 52. You can reduce it to a fraction in your top. You can reduce it to a decimal, whatever you decide. I happen to like the decimals when we're all said and done, but whatever you like to reduce it to. Do we see where the mutually exclusive is going? The term is misleading. They're not mutually. They don't stay together. They mutually exclude each other. Think of what, what I want you to think of is Venn diagrams. Venn di we've all done Venn diagrams, whether you did it for reading, you know, reading a story, saying what they had in common, where they overlap, whether you did it for math. I find Venn diagrams are very useful. Okay. Oh, let's see if we can... Why don't we do this tomorrow? Call this a day. Okay.